In today's video, we are going to go over, I believe it is five different example problems for calculating the period and the frequency of a pendulum. And before we get started, please don't forget, subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and video, and physics, physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can subscribe, you can give me a thumbs up, please leave me a comment, you can share, click the notifications bell, don't miss anything, but here we go, pendulums calculating period and frequency. Now let's just um, uh, 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 make sure we know what we're talking about with the period and the frequency. This is the pendulum. If we pull it back and then release it, it's going to swing out and then it's going to swing back. And when it swings out and then back again, that is one cycle. Now we're going to be calculating the period and the frequency, so we better know what the period and the frequency are. The period is the time it takes for the pendulum to complete one cycle and the frequency is the number of cycles the pendulum completes in one second. When the pendulum swings out and back, that's a cycle. The amount of time it takes to swing out and back, that's the period. And the number of times it does that in one second, that is the frequency. The frequency has the abbreviation F and the unit hertz, HZ. The period has the abbreviation T and is measured in seconds. Now, the previous video, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video, I went over the derivation of the equation for the period of the pendulum. And this is it. The period... T is equal to 2 pi, or 2 times pi, times the square root of L over G. L is the length, and G is the acceleration of gravity. Those are the only two factors that affect the period of the pendulum. The mass of the pendulum and the displacement of the pendulum do not affect the period. Now, for the uh, frequency, we just use the definition to calculate the frequency, basically. And I think that's the most common way we do that. And that is just the number of cycles in a unit of time, a number of cycles per second is the time that we use, the time unit. Now you should also remember that the frequency and the period are inversely proportional to each other. That is the frequency is equal to one over the period and the period is equal to one over the frequency. Remember as the period decreases, then the frequency is going to increase. And as the period increases, then the frequency is going to decrease. Now we can also kind of use this definition of the period to calculate the period also. And these are the equations that we'll use in the coming problems like that. Okay, let's get started. Number one, you're in physics class and a student measures that it takes 14.5 seconds for a pendulum to complete 12 cycles. 14.5 seconds, 12 cycles, we wanna know what is the period and the frequency. So we're going to use this calculation, this equation to calculate the period and this calculation to calculate the frequency. We're not given the length so we can't use the other period equation. So, but we can use these, and you can see we just plug the values in, 14.5 divided by 12, and that will give us 1.2 seconds for the period. It takes 1.2 seconds for that pendulum to swing out and back again. And how many cycles does it complete in a unit of time being the second? That means it can completes uh, less than one cycle, and the frequency is 0 0.83 hertz. You can see that it takes more than a second for a cycle. That means it's not going to complete a whole cycle in one second. Now, sometimes we'll do this like to calculate the period, and then we'll use the other equation to calculate the frequency, and you should get the same answer because the frequency is inversely proportional to the period. Plug those values in, you'll see you get the same 0 0.83 hertz. Okay, that's problem number one of five. So let's go on to number two of five. Okay, we want to know what is the period and frequency of a simple pendulum. That's just a regular pendulum that has a length of 1.1 meter. Now, in this problem, you'll notice you're not given the time and the number of cycles. So this time, we're going to use this equation to calculate the period. And this equation is, plugging the values in, 2 times pi is equal to the square root of the length, which is 1.1 meters divided by the acceleration due to gravity. And it doesn't say it's on Earth, but we'll just assume it's on Earth because this is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared. And if you do that, I just did this, um, this uh, intermediate step, you should get that when you divide this by this, you get 0.1, which makes sense. Basically, it's like 1 divided by 10. And then you do that, and you get that the period of that pendulum is 2.10 seconds. It takes 2.10 seconds for the pendulum to swing out and back. And we can now use our frequency equation this time. And because we don't know the number of uh, cycles, 
we can just divide one divided by the period and you get that it converts, it completes half a cycle in a second. And that kind of makes sense, or that does make sense. If it takes two seconds to go all the way out, then it must take half a second to go halfway out, and that's half a cycle in a second. There you go. Amazing. Okay, now this time we have a pendulum that has a mass of 0 0.25 kilograms and has a period of 1.15 seconds. And the initial displacement of the pendulum is pulled back 20 degrees, and we want to know what is the length of the pendulum. Okay, now we're going to use this equation, but this equation is solved for the period, and we got to get the L out of here. we got to get the length. We want to solve for the length. Now, it involves a little bit of, teeny bit of algebra. Okay, and so this is the steps that you can go through. We have a square root here, so in order to get rid of the square root, we've got to square both sides. So you can see if we square both sides, we get t squared, and then we've got to square this whole term like this. So when we, have, when we take t and we square it, then that's right, we get t squared. Over here, we're going to square all these terms. 2 squared is 4, pi squared is pi squared. It's funny. 2 squared is 4, pi squared is pi squared. And when we square the square root of L over G, then the square root and the squared cancel like that for that part of the term. And then we're just left with 4 pi squared over L. The L is in the top, the length is in the top, the G is in the bottom, stick it in the bottom. Now, we still want to solve for L here, so we got to get the G out of here, which means we're going to multiply both sides of that equation by G. We multiply the left side by G, we get T squared times G, and when we multiply the right side, the G's cancel, and you're left with 4 pi squared L. We still want to get L by itself, so we can divide by 4 pi squared both sides, and when you divide the right, no, the left side, is what you get on the left side. I moved it over to the other side so that when we end up dividing the right side by 4 pi squared, you're just left with L. And L, the period, excuse me, L, the length, is equal to t squared times g divided by 4 pi squared. So now we can go to the next slide and simply just plug in our values. 1.15 squared times g, the acceleration due to gravity, once again, it doesn't say Earth, so just assume it's on Earth, divided by 4 pi squared, and you come up with that the length of that pendulum is 0 0.33 meters. Now, that pendulum has a period of 1.15 seconds. I wonder what would be the length of a pendulum that has a period of exactly one second. So I'm just going to, I thought this would be kind of interesting to do, because you would notice that if you have the period, you're scoring the period, it just really becomes the accelerant due to gravity divided by 4 pi squared, because 1 times 1 is, that's right, 1, and 1 times 9.81 is 9.81, and there you go. And the length is, I think it comes out to be 0 0.248, so it's just about a quarter of a meter will give you a pendulum, a length of a quarter of a meter will give you a pendulum with a period of one second. Fascinating, I know. Okay, now this is a really fun problem. Let's just say you've been kidnapped, and you're on an unknown planet in the solar system. And let's say you were kidnapped, you were in science class, and you had a pendulum with you. And you know the length of the pendulum is 0 0.65 meters. So you're on an unknown planet in the solar system. You're not on Earth anymore. And you take your handy-dandy phone out, and you measure that that pendulum with that length, 0 0.65 meters, completes eight cycles in 12 seconds on the planet. And you want to know what's the acceleration due to gravity, because now you can calculate acceleration due to gravity, because you're so smart, and you have your acceleration due to gravity table with you, you can figure out what planet you're on. Watch this. Okay, so here's the equation for calculating uh, the period. Now, last time you wanted L, this time you want G. But we're going to start out the same way. Oh, I, oh, that's right. I thought we would get the period first, because when this equation we want to solve for g, but we don't know the period. So let's get the period first. So the time is 12 seconds, and the cycles is 8. So we're going to divide that. We find out that the period of that pendulum is 1.5 seconds. Okay, so now we know everything in order to solve for g, because we know the length. We know the period, and now we can solve for g, which I think we're going to do that on the next page here. There's our period, and we've got to get the g out of there, solve for g. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to square both sides. That's going to give us t squared, and we're going to cancel those again, and that gives us 4 pi squared L divided by G. Now, 
I know, and maybe you know, that if you have a fraction an equation like this where you have a single thing over here and a fraction and you want to get the denominator, you can just switch these two terms. Okay? You just switch these two terms. And algebraically it works out because what you could do otherwise is multiply both sides by g and then divide by t squared and you'll come up with the same thing. So you should maybe remember that if you have a single term and a fraction, you can switch these two and this will keep that equal like that. And so we have g is equal to 4 pi squared L divided by T squared. Then, you can plug the values in, 4 pi squared times the length, which is 0 0.65 meters, times the time, or the period, squared. Don't forget to square that, and don't forget to square this. And you get that G on that planet is 11.4 meters per second. Now, what planet is that? So now you can look up on your handy-dandy table that you brought with you. Here's all the planets in the solar system, all uh, eight of them. Pluto's not on there. And here's the gravity at the surface, the acceleration due to gravity. And you'll notice it's not perfect because I did a little rounding and maybe your measurements weren't quite perfect. But you know we're pretty close to Neptune, so that's right. You're on the big blue planet of Neptune. Okay, I think that's number five. And there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. We did some example problems for calculating period and frequency of a pendulum. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Of course, you should give me a thumbs up for this video. I mean, not of course necessarily, but uh, you should leave me a comment. You should share. You should subscribe. All that kind of fun stuff. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.